Okay, so I want to talk about love and in regards to relationships, marriage, and okay, because what I want to do is I want to segue this into my Hebrewism closing line because I want to, I'm going to create a blog. You know, I love blogs. I have a bunch of them. And I wanted to speak, you know, mainly on marriage. I wanted to um, segue this into my clothing lines, the Hebrewism, doing wedding gowns, you know, fashion for for women and also men. But I, I think, you know, us addressing the issue of love and marriage is a good way to go into that because... You know, it's hard for women um, learning to be Israel, learning, you know, how we're supposed to submit to our husbands and, um, you know, follow our man and, you know, th these things. And it's, it's, not, it's not hard for, for most women, especially those who are married. And, but for young women who are going to be married and coming out of Babylon in this misindependent world that we've been subjected to it's hard learning how to submit and subject yourself to a to a husband so I wanted to talk about that you know going to scriptures about you know being a, a dutiful wife and a, you know loving wife and um, you know in regards to being like the Proverbs 31 woman that we all desire to be because this is who the scriptures speak of and it's praise highly as how a woman should be you know we should be meek and humble and we should be subjected to our husbands and you know loving kind and dutiful you know help me to your husband you know well, I, I usually say help mate you know just being this help um, mate that your husband needs and it you know depending on the type of husband that you have and I wanted to talk about fear, of, you know, of being this loving and kind woman because I had fears. I used to always feel like this and, you know, I used to speak like this even when I was in Babylon and I didn't know the truth, you know, and I would find that men would take advantage of me and they would take, use you, you know, women, if you, you're nice and you, you know, you try to please you know, people in general, not just men, women too, will people, you know, family members, you know, friends, uncles, every people, because of the Babylonian spirit that we're under, they take it as a weakness and they tend to use you and, you know, wanna, it can come go into abuse even because people just cannot handle, you know, someone who is, you know, meek, kind and humble and loving to them, you know. It, it, you just can't handle that. But now that we can, you know, we're in the truth and we know this, um, the Most High's Word, we're, we're submitting ourselves unto Christ, we can now be this loving, kind creature and not move in fear of being hurt or abused and those kind of things. And this was always an issue for me. So I, this is why I can speak about it and try to maybe help anyone who, you know, who who understands what I'm talking about <laughs> first of all you you need to be able to relate to this because this is what I've always required to be this is the kind of woman I always wanted to be this is the kind of wife I would hope to be you know you know in when I get married and the reason why I'm speaking about this because I noticed that you know once I'm a I'm a Hebrew Israelite now and you know men they seem to always speak about marriage they I get a lot of marriage proposals you know men are looking for a righteous woman a righteous wife and someone who's gonna take care and that they can be secure in you understand sisters so I wanted to ha open it this kind of dialogue for sisters to speak about being the righteous woman that attracts a righteous man and also being a loving spirit because we know that the most high is love everything about him is love and when once we tap into him and yeshaya we become love and you attract love i'm sorry i i i believe that and i understand i believe that that's why i men you know they start talking about marriage and they start wanting to you know a woman who who understands the role of a righteous wife and you will attract men you will attract 
uh, a husband once you start operating in the spirit of love. And so I think it's very important. I think as women, we have to know how to handle this and so that you can do things in a righteous way. And then you can demand that the man deals with you in a righteous way. And so that's how you can have a, a Hebrew marriage and something that's ordained by Christ. Because if you're operating in righteousness and the, you, and the man is operating in righteousness, only then will Christ be in the middle of it. You understand? So I think this is very important that we speak. And this is going to be probably very long. Like, I only have 15 minutes on this channel. So, you know, I have part two, part three, part four, whatever. But I will pull it up, these videos up on the blog. I will, you know, start discussing, uh, you know, things about marriage and weddings and, you know, how do you choose a righteous man or how do you be chosen by a righteous man because it's the man who finds a wife, not the other way around. You know, and so that's something that we have to learn to be patient and wait on our husbands and, um, you know, prepare yourself to be a righteous wife. Work on yourself to be a righteous wife and a righteous woman. You know, stay in the scriptures and get understanding on what it is that, you, you know, you that is required of you as a wife. And... Um, you know, not do not operate in fear any longer of being hurt or abused and choosing a man based on his character, you know, and not just jumping into bed with men because now we know the truth and we know, we understand that the marriage is really ordained by the coming together of a man and woman. But that doesn't take away from the man having to show who he is, his character, his relationship with Christ and how he has to he's supposed to deal with you in a righteous way and how he should court you and how he should speak with you and you know these kind of things I think it's very important especially for younger sisters who you know are coming into into the truth and they have a lot of brothers because I know if I'm getting if I receive a lot of marriage proposals I can imagine you, you know more younger more beautiful sisters who, you know, what they have to deal with. And so I think it's important that we have these kind of dialogues for sisters so that you can, you know, have a guideline on what to look for and what to expect. First and foremost, I always say that you can only um, judge a man by his character. And so that you have to look for righteousness in a man. You have to look for righteousness in these men and how they deal with you, how they speak to you, how they treat you, you know, um, I have received several emails from women who are already in relationships and once you're in a relationship with a man it's hard to, you know, and, you're, and you understand that now you're married because of how the most high, you know, ordained marriage, but you still have to hold people to a certain level. You know, you cannot, sisters, jump in bed with men and just because now, you know, these men are saying, oh, marriage constitutes you know, when you consummate a marriage is through sex, that now, you know, you're my wife and, you know, now you're like kind of stuck in this situation. And I don't want to say stuck, but I want to, I mean like now that you're, you're married. And because of what we've learned in Babylon, we were acting like animals actually. You know, a lot of women would jump in bed with men and, you know, we thought that it was okay because this is the kind of thing that Babylon promotes right so you know you get you th you thinking that this is how you are supposed to conduct yourself and that's why I think it's important to have these kind of dialogues as an older woman speaking to younger women you know what to expect in marriage you know and what to expect from men and I'm only talking about righteous men I'm only talking about men who are Israelite men who know they're Israelite who are keeping the law statutes and commandments who are calling on a higher Bahashim Yeshaya, um, who knows and has a relationship with Christ. And we all know that everyone who's calling on the name Ahaya even, they don't know Christ sometimes. So you have to be careful. You have to watch people, judge them according to scripture and character and, you know, and righteous judgment. 
And so how do you do that? <laughs> you know, so, you know, I guess it's easy to say, but like, how do you do that? Well, you look at how the man is treating you, how he speaks to you. You know, um, you look for different things so that if he's, you know, already showing signs of abuse or, you know, not loving, not a loving character towards you, those are red flags. And that, those are things that you should look at when considering marriage, you know. You want to make sure that the man is capable of loving you. And because of what we've been through in um, Babylon, a lot of us don't know how to love each other. People don't know how to love. They don't even love themselves. <laughs> and it, 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 this, this is why this thing goes very, very deep. Because if you have a person who don't know how to love themselves, it's impossible for them to love you. Either they'll, they'll be in love with you, but it'll be like a love that they, they'll strangle you to death because they overlove you and they want you to, you know, be a certain way and they constitute as that as love because they feel like, oh, they have this deep passion and emotion for you that they have to consume you, you know, but really that's not love, you know. Or people, you know, can be so jealous over you that they feel that that's love. And that's not love. You know, I, the, the one thing I really can't handle in relationship is jealousy. I think the jealousy spirit is the one of the, the more wicked spirits. Because I, I, I equate that spirit close to the homosexual spirit. The homosexual spirit is a very vile, demonic spirit. And most homosexuals are very jealous. They're jealous of each other. They're jealous of other people, even outside of their love. It's a very demonic spirit, and it allows other spirits to come in when, you know, when you're operating in that homosexual spirit. It allows other spirits to come on you. And same thing happens with the jealousy spirit. When a person is jealous, anything can happen. You know, they'll, they will allow other d demonic spirits to come on them because of this jealousy. And they will, they will use this jealousy as a reason behind their motivation. You know, people will, will kill you. They will take a life of a person over jealousy. And we all hear about that. You know, men, you know, have killed their girlfriends or wives over being jealous or women have killed their husbands over jealousy or you know you hear so many stories about jealousy because that spirit is a very demonic spirit because it allows other demons to come into you to validate you know your your behavior of being a jealous person so I, I'm very afraid of that jealous spirit I don't deal with that spirit because I think that it's you know it opens you up to other demonic you know, entities when you allow jealousy to come in. And a lot of people like to equate jealousy with love, but it's not true. And even though the Most High in his scriptures, he says he's jealous, but he's a righteous spirit. He's, he's already operating in righteousness and purity. So it's not that we won't have this spirit of jealousy, but the Most High, when He's dealing with jealousy, is a whole different jealousy than when we, in our fallen state, is dealing with jealousy. So people have to understand that. They, they think jealousy equates with love and that when you love, you automatically will become jealous of a person. And that is not true. And usually nine, nine times out of ten, when a person allows jealousy in, it opens the door for other demonic spirits. And then the person is dealing with all kind of other things, and it's just not really, it's not healthy, it's not good. And just the same with the homosexual spirit, when people allow that spirit to come over them, they open themselves up for all kind of other demons. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not a spirit of the Most High. And, um, you know, it's very, it's not good, you know. So I wanted to speak about that in, in, in reference to love, you know, people feeling that, you know, jealousy, like when, I, and, and I have to say, you know, most of the times when I've been in, in Babylon and in the relations that I were in, men or, would always become jealous with me. And, I, you know, when you're young and it, and it happens, you think, oh, he loves me, you know, he 